Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Wehrman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Monday morning, October 25th, 2021. The Chosen, Book 2, Day 26. Ask whatever of him. <clears throat> Mark 11, verse 24. I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Asking for whatever sounds simple enough, asking for whatever sounds simple enough, but wax is more complicated when put into practice. The asking part is pretty straightforward. We know how to want stuff. It's the receiving bit where the wheels can fall off, you know, because we don't always get what we've asked for. Since we don't know God's will and feeling like unanswered spiritual losers is the opposite of what we're going for, not asking seems like the better, safer option. Sure, we'll never get what the whatever is, but at least we won't have to deal with all that pesky discouragement. Fortunately, Jesus does not share the uh, aforementioned sentiment, and he tells us repeatedly to ask for whatever. Why? Because what we want matters to God. He bakes many of those wants directly into our DNA, and there are certain whatevers he's eager to answer for the sake of his kingdom and glory. Incidentally, the same could be said of our deficiencies. They too matter, and God wants to use them. More on that later. As it turns out, God knows everything about the difficult situation you're in. He knows exactly how it should be resolved and where your weak, inadequate self fits into the equation. It's because of this that he invites you to ask for whatever. This isn't a new concept. God woke Solomon up in the middle of the night to extend the same offer. Solomon wasn't wise yet, but he was smart enough to take God up on it. Shortly after, Solomon was appointed king by his father David. From 1 Kings 3, 5 through 6, 7 and 9. The Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a child and do not know how to carry out my duties. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. God was pleased with Samson's whatever and honored his, his ask. Then he blessed him a silly amount extra just for fun making Solomon the wisest and richest man who ever lived. Why? Because God knew the situation. Solomon was a new king. God knew the deficiency. Solomon was as clueless, was a clueless new king. God knew the want. Solomon was a clueless new king who wanted to govern well. It's the same with us. He invites us to ask for whatever so he can meet the need, resolve the situation, and reveal his will in the process. We're only spiritual losers when we foolishly decline the mis miraculous offer. Safer is never better when it comes to prayer. Ask if you don't want, if you don't happen to receive the what. Oh, and if you don't happen to receive the whatever, then ask God to search your heart and show you why. Maybe it's a timing thing, or maybe it's not for you. Whatever the reason, don't get discouraged. If your main whatever is to glorify God and build His kingdom, He'll be pleased with your ask and will most certainly honor it. But, and who knows, you may even get the silly amount extra. So Solomon was appointed king by his father. Remember, Solomon is King Solomon is King David's son. And so he was very young, and he asked God for something. So this ask, seek, and knock, he asked for um, a discerning heart to govern his people and to do it well. And that was pleasing to God. So God honored that, gave him that, and also threw in some extra stuff. He was known as King Solomon, the wisest and richest man who ever lived. So ask for whatever it is you want. And if it's within the will of God and within the kingdom building process, you will get what you want. If it's just to make you happy and it's really not what you need, probably not going to get it. So... But don't be discouraged. Keep asking. God will discern that and work it all out for you. So the prayer focus is, thank God that what we want actually matters to God. So remember, even those wants that are little, tiny, silly little things, pray to God for it. Ask for something big enough that failure is guaranteed unless God shows up. 
So if there's a big ask, miraculous healing of someone, um, you know, um, addiction to be broken, um, a past hurt to be mended, guilt that a sin you did years ago just won't go away, and the only way that's going to happen is through God, then ask him for it. Ask him to take that away. Praise God for being mighty enough to do it. So moving forward, do you sometimes feel like it's a better, safer option to not ask God for whatever you want? Why or why not? Do you think it's too small? Do you think it's too silly? Do you think it's impossible? Sometimes we don't even ask God to heal. Here's a situation. You ask God to heal someone and then you think, and it's yourself, and you think, oh, why am I asking for this little thing when there's people who are very, very sick? Ask him. Ask him to heal those people and ask him to heal you. God knows the situation, he knows the deficiency that we have, and he knows the need that we need. What might he be asking you to ask for right now? So don't be afraid to ask. Don't think it doesn't matter to God. Don't think it's being selfish because you would like to be healed yourself. Our main whatever should always be to glorify God and build his kingdom. Start by asking for that and record how he answers you. That's the other piece that we forget about. Get a prayer journal. Or just a, you know, a notebook that's got blank paper. And write down your prayers. And then the date. And then go back months later and see how he's answered it. Might be years later. But keep it and look at see how he's answered prayers. And then highlight those answers and praise God for the answers. Because sometimes we forget to go back and say thank you. Like the ten lepers, only one came back and said, hey, thanks for healing me. So let's not be like the other nine. Let's thank God for what he is doing in um Know that it's going to take time. A lot of times it's a miraculous thing that can be done. God can do it anytime he wants, but sometimes it takes a little longer. For whatever reason, whatever his plan is, we have to trust that. We know that he's the one that's in charge of it. So don't be afraid to ask, even for the little things, for yourself, for a loved one, um, for your dog, your animals. You know, people are, should I pray for my animal? They're sick. Absolutely. God loves the animals. He created them. So um, make sure that you're not afraid to ask. And start with asking for the kingdom of heaven, for the will of the kingdom of heaven, um, to glorify God. Um, start by asking for those little things that seem silly, and God will um, answer you. And then be ready to record the answer. So I'm hoping this was helpful for you today. Uh, don't forget to ask. Seek and knock. Seeking and knocking means we find a time to be alone with God and we knock on the heart of God through prayer, sometimes through crying, sometimes through yelling, sometimes through um, writing, you know, sometimes through reading the word and then ask and then watch for the answers. So enjoy this rainy day, you know, I don't know if we need any more rain, but <laughs> looks like we're going to get it. So enjoy the day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.